Hello, this is Tammy C. Walker, the owner of Dreams Are a Reality. I created this channel to provide light and love. I am coming to you today from the Daily Word, a word of inspiration. Before I get started, please be so kind as to subscribe to this channel if you enjoy these type of positive, uplifting messages. Also, please hit that like button that will help get my videos and podcasts circulating and percolating so that other people can enjoy my information. Thank you so much. Today, we are going to talk about joy. Nothing can keep my joy from me. I know that's right. There are so many things that make me feel joyous. Watching a sunset, walking in nature, or looking into a baby's eyes. Other times, I may feel challenged or distressed, far from joyful. I may be embroiled in conflict, worried about a result, or coping with hurt feelings and struggling to forgive. When that happens, I remember joy is a part of my spiritual identity. I can never be apart from it. Today, I commit to living in joy, no matter what may be happening in my life or in the world. Even as I remain present to circumstances, I draw from an inexhaustible well spiritual truth, the source of my joy. My joy is not overshadowed by fleeting moments of unhappiness. I live with an open field. I live with an heart filled to overflowing with joy. And the Bible verse from Isaiah, for you shall go out in joy and be led back in peace. That's Isaiah 55 and 12. Joy. Now, joy is a powerful emotion, but some people don't have it. Coming from a, you know, church background, not to be judging, but I would notice some people would come to church Sunday after Sunday, but they had no joy. You see, going to church is what we should do. We do want to worship with other parishioners or um, or other believers. That's a very powerful feeling to be among others that believe. But we have to have something to anchor to when we remove ourselves out of that building on Sunday or Wednesday Bible class. And, uh, uh, you know, believe it or not, a lot of Christians or believers... Now, I don't know how high it's a lot, but some definitely don't have any joy because we are the church. That's one thing I always remember. We are the church. And you got to have something to hold on to when you're not at church. Some of my biggest breakthrough moments came from me praying and worshiping at home. Of course, going to church definitely helped me. But you got to know how to do it for yourself. Have you ever met some people? They may not attend church and they know that you do and they'll say, when you go to church, say a prayer for me. But you know what? They don't have to do that because we all have a hotline to God. If you believe someone that goes to church Sunday after Sunday, when they pray, God hears them. Someone who don't attend church, if they still have a relationship with God, he hears them. So you don't have to tell somebody to pray for you. That's an inward action that you can do for yourself. That joy... It's something um, that's unexplainable. I remember having it. Of course, I always say this first. I don't want anybody to think that, you know, I was diagnosed with cancer and I was like, oh, oh, ha, ha, ha. no, it, the first few weeks was rough. But once I processed it, my joy came back because I still was grateful for the supporting cast that I had, which was a lot of friends and family who rallied around me. I was happy that my doctor, I had a team of doctors. I think I had like four, maybe four or five doctors, oncologists, primary doctor, radiologist, plastic surgeon, surgeon. Yeah, I had a lot of doctors, but they took good care of me. And, you know, you feel you feel better when you have people that care and really hear out your concerns when you when you're de- dealing with a major illness. And I had a social worker. It was, and I had, I had a lot. I had a lot of support. So, um, such a scary time. I still felt supported. So my joy was still there. I was also joyous because I was off work, but I had an income. You know, I had short-term disability. I was grateful for that. 
it was a lot of things going in my favor. As I speak to a lot of people, and it's human nature, until you learn how to change your thoughts, they go to the dark side pretty quickly, regardless of what situation it is. They, it could be a job loss. It could be um, having issues with a, a relationship, like with their parents or a sibling or a romantic relationship. It could be, it's just so many things, their own health. Um, it's like just quick to go to the dark side. But if you could keep it positive, it helps. Again, anybody that listens to my channel and you know me personally, I'll never be a fake. I'll never be a fraud. I battle with um, anxiety and I could think negative sometimes too. But this is why I do these tools in the morning because it'll get me back on track. This is why I have my therapy appointment on Thursday because speaking to her helps keep me focused. This is why I have to pray. This is why I have a friend in um, California who I speak to a lot and I speak to my 94 year old God auntie who's very wise she's been on this earth 94 years so she could tell me just a little bit <laughs> I'm being um, sarcastic she could tell me a lot this is why I call my older sister because my older sister is very positive she is not a negative person and she always sees the good so that's why I can stay connected to good people and more importantly, I stay connected to God because I know my weaknesses. So to have joy, you kind of got to get to know yourself. To have joy, you can't panic. I think that's the key to having joy because the human nature, we always panic. I use these words always and many and a lot. Sometimes it's exaggerated. But when we get bad news, we do panic. It's a, it is Human nature, fight or flight, and nobody wants to get let go when they have a mortgage or rent to pay. Nobody wants to get a um, breakup unannounced, you know, like you didn't even see it coming. That's hard to go through as your child, something happens to your, your child or your adult child, something happens to your husband, your love, the love of your life, your, a dear friend, something happens to you and your health. That's hard to accept, and that's when we panic and go to that dark side. But if you can remember joy, joy is a presence that you have regardless of your circumstances. Okay, are you going to be joyous? You just buried your mom. You just buried a parent. That's a tough time to be joyous. But, you know, once the grief settles, and I could speak on that, Especially with my mom. It was very hard with my dad. I was younger. It's a long story. I won't even go there. But it, those two different passings I handled totally different. Maybe it was age. I was, I was, I was a, what, quite a bit older with my mom when she passed. I understood death a little better, but it still hurt equally the same. But somewhere deep inside of me, I still had joy. Even though I know I knew my mom, you know, had made her transition to the other side. Um, it's still hard, though. Eleven years later, is it eleven years? Yep. Mother's Day is not the best day for me. I'm not sad on that day, but what do I do? <laughs> you know, what do I do on Mother's Day? What do I do? So I just kind of go inward on that day. It's hard to be an adult, an orphan, and you're an adult. People don't talk about that. When you lose both parents and you're an adult, it's tough. Especially, I can only speak on my part. I had, to me, <laughs> to me, I'm being very biased. I had great parents. And some people say, oh, losing your dad is one thing, but mom is mom. It's hard to lose a mom. No, I don't do that. My parents, the love I had was equal. And my dad was highly instrumental in my upbringing and keeping our house ran and he raised us my mom would be at work my mom worked nice she did too but i'm saying dad ran the show so all hell to my dad otis walker i'm not gonna say losing mom was worse i love my parents all the same joy we used to sing a song in church joy joy god's great joy because that's where it come from joy is priceless everyone can't say they have it 
joy is not connected to the red bottom shoe. It's not connected to how big your house is. It's not connected to the Tesla, the Ferrari Testarossa. <laughs> it's not connected to that. Um, it's connected. It's an inner being. It's a peace. It's a calm. It's a gratitude. It's a spirit of gratitude. It's unexplainable. Your whole world could be crumbling, but you still have peace. You still feel somewhat content because you know you're connected to the Most High, the Almighty God, Jesus Christ. That's who I believe in. I never knock what somebody else believes in. I don't judge. That's, that's you know, everybody had their own personal relationship. But if you don't have joy, I would say try to find some by centering yourself by doing rituals whatever you got to do to keep yourself on point me i'm a little bit i call myself the weirdo don't say you're weird yeah i'm weird i embrace my weirdness and i know if i don't journal and i know if i don't read that daily word and i know if i don't read the power of positive thinking and i know if i don't meditate and i know if i don't talk to my therapist i'm gonna start thinking some weird type of way you know you only know who you are and how God made you. I know I'm highly sensitive. And certain things just don't do well with me. And it'll it'll take me somewhere I'm not trying to go. So I stay on my mental health. That's me. If you don't have joy, figure out what will help you. Would it be the support of a therapist every week, every other week? You don't have to tell anybody. Would it be the support of a mentor? Would it be the support of your pastor or minister? Would it be journaling? Would it be exercising? Would it be yoga? Would it be meditation? Whatever it is for you, Pilates. I hear great things about Pilates. Swimming, water aerobics. Only you know prayer. I'm going to get out of here. I hope something I said helped you. Thank you all for the comments yesterday. That was really nice. And I hope you had a good day. And have a great day today. Bye.